All right, Congressman Meadows also reiterated his support for President Trump's proposal of a 15% corporate tax rate. Joining us right now to talk more about that is global market strategist at Bulltech Capital Markets, head of research, Catherine Rooney Vera. Catherine, good to see you. Thank you, Maria. Thanks so much for joining us. So what are you watching in the coming weeks? Now we see that the Senate is going to be at work for the next two weeks. Do you expect tax reform to actually get passed this year? If they do it in coordination with health care reform, I think it could be passed via reconciliation, which would be the ideal scenario. I think there's three, Maria, right? So there's the miracle that something gets done and the market continues to rally. We can see the S&P under that context with the effective tax rates coming lower, uh, rally to as high as 2,900, I think, over the course of the next 12 months. Nothing could happen, which would be the Republican infighting precipitated by the debt ceiling debate, um, budget battles, and the failed promise of a Mnuchin, that Mnuchin made, which is around the time frame of August to September for tax reform. So the combination of those three things could bring about the nothing scenario, which in my view is, would take markets a lot lower. A lot. That would, that would be a, a cause of sell-off. Absolutely. I think 5 to 10 percent. Yeah, I, I think, and since the 1950, 90 percent or 90 plus percent of the time, we have a 5 percent correction in the market. We haven't seen that yet this year. So I think under that scenario, you, you would be a setup for a sell-off. But the fact that they've agreed to work through right. August, to me, like that, let's focus on that for a second. That's a big deal. I'll, I'll be working in August, uh, and I'm having a better year than a lot of the guys down there. So um, I think that's important. So hopefully they will get something done. And if that gets done, if that if that is the base case, I think earnings can start to tick higher and the market would move quite a bit higher. You're saying, look, the fact that they just said, look, we're going to work for the first two weeks of every vacation tells you they want to get this done, they're going to get this done. Absolutely. And there's they, another constituency that, you know, just the threat of not coming home in August, for those of us, <laughs> our congressional spouse, I mean, I know people complain that Congress doesn't work. They work a lot and we don't see them a lot. When they come home to district, um, then they have to be all over the district. So we don't see them a lot. We look forward to our August break. So there's a constituency that's really going to push for them to get it done maybe even before August or very quickly in August and that is congressional spouses who will be very upset <laughs> so that they um, don't have to yeah, work so they can come the home yeah weeks. it does yeah. it, you, see, you see that with the government shutdowns too that it's it's really the spouses saying get it done and get home I'm going crazy here with the kids um, and that that moves things along so I, just the threat of I think one of the biggest questions we have out there is this 15 percent rate yep. that we alluded to mm -hmm. can, can they get that done I mean 15 seems really low I'm yeah. hearing talks about 20 20, 22 percent. Some people say it's going to have to be 28 to get yep. through Congress because the Democrats are going to st uh, stall them. They're saying it's a tax cut for the wealthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So w what are your thoughts on the actual rate that can get so done? So of course the border adjustment tax would have been the principal and best financier of the corporate tax reform. But since that's dead in the water um, and unless they get health care, the fiscal savings from health care reform through at the same time as tax reform, which could go together in a reconciliation, um, what they would have to then rely on is uh, closing of loopholes and deductions, which is fine, but would face opposition in the Senate, closing of all deductions except right. charitable and um, home mortgage. Um, so if that were to be the case, then we would not get to 15. We wouldn't get close to 15. Because they need get to some 20. revenue. The revenue either has exactly. to come from the savings from health care, exactly. it has to come from that border adjustment tax, right. or a higher corporate tax. Right. Because they can't just jam it through with something that, that blow, you know, increases the deficit. They would have to find a way to fund it. So in that case, Kevin, I think that we would get to 28 to 30 percent. Regardless, I think that would be fine for the markets. I think that would validate sure. current valuations. I, I don't think so. I think, I think, I think, think the so. markets, if they I get a 28 percent or 30 percent, bye-bye. I mean, they were promised 15 percent yeah. to then get double that, especially when you look at what, what's happening overseas. Look at, what, look at what's happening I mean, in granted, Britain. I mean, it's better than 35 percent. Well, Way but, but, but Britain's going to 17 percent by next year. They're oh. talking about going to 15 percent. That's going to be a corporate haven over there in the U.K. But 15, I think, was a starting point. Yeah, I yeah of course. But 28 so, percent, the market will sell off. I bet you it's 22 percent. Some, something yeah. above 20. In the 20s. And, 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 and that's what Barron is, is pushing helpful. for. Barron has been talking about 22 percent. Correct. Yeah. I, I feel like they need to have a meeting of, of the minds in the middle. I mean, so I, I, I don't think 28 percent is going to be celebrated. Yeah, I, I, I think there's going to be let's, disappointed but by that. Maria, let's say it's combined with repatriation of massive flows, right? Let's say it's combined with the repatriation of capital. The top five guys with offshore money that's undeclared are Oracle, Microsoft, Merck, and Pfizer. Okay, so let's say that comes well, back. Well, that, that's supposed to be 10 percent, that number. That's the tax holiday. Right. That's a right. bipartisan the issue. That was in Barack Obama's budget. That was in Hillary Clinton's mm -hmm. proposal. That's in Donald Trump's. But with the repatriation, that helps the markets and big companies. That doesn't
doesn't help small businesses. This 15% goes through to small uh, The pass yes. through should get the 15%. Yes. Um, that's Correct. what. So that, if they combine it, it with to be common ground on the pass throughs. Exactly. If they combine it with repatriation, then we can get lower. But I, I think there's a real <laughs> chance that nothing gets done. You know, that's on really? the table. So yeah. it, it's a possibility. So and, and here's the market sitting right at or near all time highs. Right. So I think a cut, a 30, 28, 22, 26, a cut. I believe worst case holds the market here, best case rallies the market. I think some I, of those I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't fine. know. I mean, I think that what I'm hearing is that the Republicans really understand this is do or die, that this is the opportunity of a lifetime. They've never, they will never have this opportunity again. And I think that's why you're seeing, you know, we're going to stay through August uh, on both the Senate and the House side. They really want to get this done. They know that I mean, and they, they have don't to want to face done. these voters. Let's talk about Capitol Hill for a second. Federal Reserve Chairman Janet Yellen delivering her semi-annual speech to Congress today. She's going to speak with the House Financial Services today. She's going to speak with the Senate tomorrow. Investors are watching any hints if the Fed is going to act further this year, including possible plans to shrink the balance sheet. Now, here's what J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said yesterday. This unwind could be, quote, more disruptive than people think. Mm -hmm. Catherine, your thoughts on this, the Federal Reserve? Right. If they do not, if they choose not to use it as a monetary policy tool, in other words, if they choose to um, really put a cap on roll-offs, then I would agree. But if, in fact, which I think is the case, they use it as a monetary policy tool, which means that they only allow a certain quantity of roll-offs, make it gradual, kind of pulling the air out of, out of a balloon, little by little, and pull off the, you know, pull off the gas pedal when they see the market negatively reacting, which I think is the case, then I don't think it would be catastrophic. But if, in fact, they use it as a monetary policy, did not, and let it roll off, then I think you would, you would see Treasury yields go higher, risk off, and it would, in fact, be disruptive. I get his point. He's right. These are unprecedented times. Yeah. And what about rates? Do you think we're going to see another rate hike this year? Because that congressman that we had on, uh, Kustoff, at the top of the show, was not so euphoric about this economy and was questioning more interest rate increases. I'm not worried about it. I don't think interest rate increases are what the market's worried about either. I think we get one more. Who cares, really? Um, what we need to see it's is still well, 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 the Fed is focused on raising rates, and the reason why sure. is because asset inflation, quantitative easing, what we're talking about with the Fed's balance sheet, has led to market multiples to expand. That's why we're trading in 18 and a half times earnings, which is historically high, because mm -hmm. the way, because cost of capital is cheaper now, mm -hmm. because so that's why earnings are worth more. So the problem is is that the Fed is focused on this. They're talking about it in their Fed minutes, mm -hmm. and so they have to raise rates because they've even yep. mentioned it. They're worried about asset inflation. It hasn't trickled through to real consumer good inflation, but it has happened on the asset side. Do you think they both raise rates and a lot of the at the yeah. very same time? Yeah, and we're not in a one and a half percent rate environment right now. The, the market can support higher rates, so I think that's why they yeah. should go higher. All right, we, we will leave it there. Catherine.